three stages to becoming qualified. This is based on your academic qualifications, your work experience, also called initial professional development, and passing your professional review. Before anything, go to the ICE website and register for your free My ICE account. Now this will provide you with an ICE membership number and grant you access to exclusive content, book your attendance at world-class events, or manage your membership. After successful registration, send an email to the ICE to confirm which membership category you can apply for, so whether it's ING or CENG, based on your academic qualification. You will need to provide the following information in your email to them. So your full university or college name, the exact course title, for instance, civil engineering, the qualification type, so MENG, BENG, HND, HNC, the course type, whether it's full-time, part-time, sandwich or distance learning, the course start date, the course end date, number of years of working experience in the industry, and if you're a member of another licensed engineering institution and the number of years, and finally your membership goal, whether you intend to apply for ING or CENG. Academic Qualifications Incorporated Engineer ING If you have an accredited bachelor's degree, you already have the qualifications you need for ING. If you don't have a bachelor's degree, but you have a HNC or HND, you can work towards becoming an Incorporated Engineer ING. You can either follow the technical report route or you'll need to do a period of further learning to bring your qualifications up to the level of education required for ING. Chartered Engineer If you have one of the following, you already have the qualifications you need for CENG. An accredited four-year integrated MENG degree, a bachelor's degree which is accredited as CENG, with further learning, plus an accredited master's degree. If your course is not accredited, don't worry. It doesn't mean that your qualifications won't count. The ICE will carry out an academic assessment on it. If your qualifications don't meet the requirements, the ICE will give you advice on how you can top them up or suggest other ways for you to qualify. If you do not have a master's degree, you can still become chartered. If you have an accredited undergraduate's degree, you'll need to do some further learning or you can use the technical report route. The technical report route is for engineers who want to become members, that's M-I-C-E, at incorporated or chartered level, but don't have the right academic qualifications. This route lets you use the knowledge you have gained through your professional experience to show that you have the required academic competence and professional abilities needed for the membership level you are applying for. The technical report route has two main stages. Stage one is the initial assessment and stage two is the professional review, which includes a professional review application, including a technical and an experience report, academic presentation and interview, which is 90 minutes, and a professional interview, which lasts for 60 minutes. And finally, a written communication task, which is between 60 and 90 minutes. Further learning is the extra work you need to do to bring your education and experience up to the level for CENG. You can do this in two ways. 
further learning in education. So this means doing an accredited master's MSc course. Further learning at work. This involves adding to your knowledge in the workplace. You can do this with support from your employer or ask your employer if they offer an employer managed further learning program. If your employer doesn't have one, you can do it independently and the ICE will track your progress. This table gives an indication of the minimum number of years the ICE anticipates that you would normally need to have worked in the civil engineering industry to get the required underpinning knowledge. Work experience, initial professional development, IPD. Initial professional development is where you develop the special skills, knowledge and experience that help you to become professionally qualified. Your IPD is measured against a set of attributes which you can achieve in three stages. Number one, knowledge. A basic understanding and knowledge of the attributes and how you can achieve it. Two, experience. Achieving the attributes in different situations, working under supervision. And three, ability. Achieving the attributes in different situations, assisting others and working unsupervised. A career appraisal is a way for you to complete the initial professional development stage of your professional qualification. You may also use the career appraisal to demonstrate the additional IPD as you progress from one grade of membership to another, for example, from ING, MICE, to CENG, MICE. You will need to show how you have met the attributes at the ability level for the grade of membership you have applied for. The attributes include Attribute 1 Understanding and practical application of engineering Attribute 2 Management and leadership Attribute 3 Commercial ability Attribute 4 Health, safety and welfare. Attribute 5. Sustainable development. Attribute 6. Interpersonal skills and communication. Attribute 7. Professional commitment. You will need to prepare and send the following documents to the ICE. A career appraisal application form. If not a current member, evidence that you have the required qualifications. A cover page. A two page CV. A report to demonstrate your experience at ING MICE or CENG MICE against the attributes. Appendices. CPD records and a non-refundable fee. A professional review is the final stage in becoming professionally qualified. This is where you prove that you've developed all the right skills to become professionally qualified. The professional review comprises a presentation to your reviewers, an interview with your reviewers, written communication task invigilated by ICE staff. Unless you've opted to wait for a physical venue, your review will be held online via Microsoft Teams. Your professional review interview will begin with a 15 minute presentation delivered to your reviewers based on an aspect of your professional review report. The presentation content should expand upon your report. It should not cover all the attributes, 
nor should it be a summary of your CV or of your report. You are encouraged to use visual aids to illustrate your presentation. You will be able to present these on screen via Microsoft Teams as per the online review guidance. If your review is held in a physical venue, you will deliver your presentation seated across the table with visual aids no larger than A3 and you are permitted to use a laptop computer but note that an external power supply will not be provided. After the presentation, you will then be interviewed by your reviewers who will seek to confirm from your responses during the interview that you have achieved the required level of competence in all the attributes. The presentation and interview will last a maximum of 16 minutes for the IPR and 75 minutes for the CPR. If you haven't demonstrated sufficient evidence of meeting a particular attribute in your report, your reviewers will pose specific questions to try to draw out your knowledge and experience in that area. All mobile devices must be switched off prior to the start of the interview. The recording of the interview is prohibited. You will be given a communication task by your reviewers. The communications task will take place after your interview and you will be informed of the timing of this in your notification letter. The communications task will be based on current issues within the industry and you will be expected to respond as an engaged civil engineer, not a technical expert. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you require help with becoming a chartered civil engineer, do not hesitate. Just send us an email and we'll help you out. So until then, we wish you the very best in your professional life. Bye-bye.